What's up, Technobehave for Server Pro, and welcome to this tutorial for installing and using Iridium Skyblock. Iridium Skyblock is a super simple Skyblock plugin for your server. It has tons of functionality, allowing you to do lots with your server. While it's simple, it is incredibly massive and there's tons that you can customize. In this video, we'll only be touching on some of the customization, but we'll mainly focus on getting it up and running for you to play with your friends. If you'd like to learn more about customizing the plugin, click the I in the top right hand corner or the link in the description down below to see the next video we have on this plugin. To install a plugin, head over to the plugin section. Search for Iridium Skyblock. Install the version that's compatible with your server and restart. Alternatively, you could download it from the Spigot page and upload it to your Server Pro panel. Note that the plugin also requires Vault to be installed, and it's a good idea to install an economy plugin of your choice on top of that. You can see what plugins you already have set up by going to the Install tab under Plugins. After installing the plugin, you won't see too much different with your server. Running slash island help or slash is help will return a huge list of commands for the plugin. Note that this is only page one of three. We can get to the other pages by clicking the right and left arrows. Now, of course, because it's such a massive plugin, we'll only be touching on the basics in this video. But if you'd like to go much more into depth and customize everything that you can in this plugin, you'll have to check out the next video that we have on this topic, going through a lot more of the config than we do in this video. In this one, we'll just be touching on it to keep the video from reaching half an hour. Check the description for that video once again. Simply running slash island or slash is will create an island for you and then teleport you to it. There we go. And once on the island, running slash is or slash island once again will open a simple GUI where you can control your island. Let's run through everything here. Starting in the top left, we have island top. This will show us a leaderboard of each island on the server. Hovering over players' heads will show information about them and their islands. Clicking on them will teleport you to their island. Going back, we also have a island regen and an island delete button in the other corners of this menu. In the center, we have a whole bunch of options, starting with island biome. Inside of here, you can see what each kind of biome costs to generate a new island. Not only does it cost in-game currency, but it also has a crystals requirement next to it. We'll get to that currency in just a moment. We also have a home button to teleport to our island. We have a button where we can view and manage members of our island promoting and demoting them with left and right click. Then we have a way of checking warps for our island, which currently I have none defined. Again, we'll get here later. Then we have island upgrades. These range from size upgrades to member count upgrades, warps, which we saw the menu for earlier, and a generator to improve our island's generator. Heading back, we have island missions. And as you can see, this is where the crystal currency is earned. We have multiple ones that we can progress in by default. Simply completing and advancing in challenges will award the user crystals and in-game currency. The first is to collect 100 XP, so I'll spawn in some XP bottles and gain a few levels quick. When we eventually get an achievement, we'll see it pop up on the screen. I'm playing in a bit of a small window, so that was going off of the screen, but for normal members playing in full screen, it should appear just fine. But regardless, checking the IS missions menu again, we can see that we've progressed. Going back, we also have a menu for buying island boosters. We can increase mob spawn rates from spawners, increase crop growing rates, increase experience gained, and even allow members to fly on our island. The island border menu simply allows you to change the color of your island's border. The island bank lets you view, deposit, and withdrawal experience, crystals, and even money. Going back, we also have island permissions. This is where the plugin gets really interesting. Each island has its own specific permissions for each and every different level of member. Of course, you're not able to customize your own, but having a look at these other ones, we see there's a list of permissions that we can simply just click to toggle them on and off. Don't worry, server admins can customize the defaults for these. How do you get these? Well, of course, through the members list where we saw promotion and demotion ability. And finally, we have island co-op. This lets us see and teleport to islands that we're a part of. Super simple and easy to use. Before we dive into commands, knowing that we have a complete wiki for the plugin that includes tons and tons of information is extremely important. I'd highly recommend checking this out for yourself and referring to this if you need more info. Clicking the link in the description will take you to this page, the Getting Started page. 
on the right hand side, you'll find a whole list of chapters or categories that we can skip to if you'd like more information on any of these over here. So let's head across to the commands and permissions section as that's where we are currently. Let's run through some of these that aren't explicitly available in the GUI. So we can invite players to our island with slash is invite followed by a player's name. Then we can also use slash is join followed by a player's name to join or request to join a player's island. Slash is crystals allows you to check how many crystals your island has. We have five. Slash is set warp allows you to set warps on your island. Simply just follow it with a name for the warp, I'll call a test, and enter a password, which I'll set as simply 123. After doing this, we've now created a warp. We can get there with the slash ISGUI and the Island Warps menu. Simply left clicking allows us to teleport to it, and right clicking allows us to delete it. After clicking on it, it'll simply ask us for the password, which we can enter and will immediately be taken to the warp. Super simple. Slash IS chat allows you to enter a private chat mode for only members of your island. This is a toggle, so once on, every message you send will go directly to members of your island compared to the usual all chat. Finally, slash IS shop opens the island's shopping GUI. And here we can purchase some interesting goodies for the island. There aren't any perks here, but there are a ton of different blocks and useful items that players can purchase for in-game currency. You can customize quite literally everything inside of the shop, but of course, we'll be getting to that in the next video, running through the config. You can view the prices by simply hovering over items, left click to purchase, and right click to sell the item. Of course, you'll spend more to buy it than you'll earn selling. There are of course, multiple pages as well. Now quickly for some admin commands. Slash IS recalc recalculates the value of all of the islands in our server. This of course could take a short while to complete. This should only really be useful if the leaderboard is not correctly displaying. Slash IS give crystals followed by a player's name and amount allows you to spawn in crystal currency and immediately give them to players to spend on island perks. Slash IS remove crystals allows you to revoke crystals from a player's balance. Slash IS Bypass allows you to bypass all restrictions of the island that you're currently on. Of course, this will be useful for moderators if they need to destroy illegal items or explicit signs, for example. And we also have Slash IS Fly, which toggles flight. Finally, we have Slash IS Reload that reloads all of the plugin settings from the config files. Locate the config in the plugins folder. Now, of course, this is where the plugin gets very long. So far, this video has been a short overview of the plugin, and if you're happy to play Skyblock with friends, it's probably already configured more than well enough for you to play. If you're a serious server owner, then you're more than welcome to dive into customizing each and every single file in here. We'll only really peek into these and have a look at the general settings file, config.json. If you'd like more information on what every file is and the commands within them, make sure to refer to the wiki again. Click the link in the description and head across to the configurations tab on the right. While most good plugins are well documented and include notes of what each and every setting does right above the setting, the sheer size of this plugin completely prevents that from being a thing. The general config file is 573 alliance long with nothing but settings inside of it. So that's why we'll have another video coming out, which will be linked down below, where we do nothing but run through a lot of settings in each config file. This config.json file contains some general settings for the plugin, such as prefixes for menus and world names, as well as a couple placeholder names. We also have some localization and a ton of toggles that we can change for our server. These range from toggling explosions on line 31, to allowing or disallowing water in the nether. And of course, disabling or enable bank withdrawing and the island shop on line 16 and 17. Scrolling down, we can change the default biomes of our skyblocks, which still means players can customize them later using the in-game menu and currency. And right below it, we can even customize the default permissions for each rank in the island menu, which we touched on earlier. Right below this on line 169, we can limit how many blocks of a certain type can be placed on an island. This is very useful for controlling laggy items that can slow a server down. This is followed by an incredibly long, super exhaustive list of every single type of biome that players can purchase and use, as well as price, crystal price, and an icon which is any Minecraft block or item. Finally, we have the blocked entity section and deny natural spawn on line 572 to stop certain mobs spawning. 
But without going on for hours on end, this is where we'll end this light crash course as we'll be continuing this in another future video. Once again, make sure to check the description down below for this. Anyways, I hope this tutorial was somewhat helpful. If you have any video suggestions, make sure to leave them in the comments below. If you're having issues with anything, contact our support team. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Ciao!